I thought this was a good little clip from the Fresh and Fit podcast where Myron asked a pretty good question about, you know, why do you think most women are single? Of course, this single young woman makes this exclamation that we'll take a listen to. Uh, do you think the reason why so many women are single is because social after. media options? I'll tell you after. Um, mm, in a way. Okay. Um, well, let me say, I feel like a lot of women are single now because of the whole um, independence thing that's going on. Everybody wants to be a boss bitch. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. And women are finally realizing their worth. So it's like women are not settling for bullshit. Like, I'm just going to keep it honest. Like, women are not settling for bullshit. And a lot of women are on this mindset where we don't want a broke nigga. And it's hilarious when you listen to stuff like this. Most female jobs are welfare jobs when you just look at the statistics. And during the pandemic, I did a video talking about this a while back. When the pandemic came and the government shut everything down and the only jobs that were basically allowed to stay open were essential jobs. And for every one man in the private in the public sector that lost his job 10 women lost their jobs meaning that all those jobs were not essential and the statistics show it right most women vote for the expansion of government i.e democrat doesn't matter what party it is or what party it's referred to there's just typically most single women and most single mothers obviously vote for the expansion of government and it just basically means where they vote for the government to take money from this group and to transfer it to them via welfare programs. Now, some of that welfare programs comes in the form of direct checks like EBT or welfare checks or they'll get like, you know, STEMIs, UBI, whatever they want to refer it to. Some of it is in the way of productive welfare where they will give women jobs for the sake of giving them a job so that they can feel strong and independent and not feel like they're a welfare queen when in fact most of them are. And we're gonna look over some of the statistics just to show that that is the case. Now overwhelmingly, just straightforwardly, most women are in debt. Most credit card debt is held by women and most student debt is held by women and it's like not even close to the amount of people. And especially when you look in the black community, the black community in terms of their women are overwhelmingly drowning in college debt now a lot of people of course are upset that they like 81 million votes joe biden didn't get them when you actually look at how women vote and women make up the vast majority of the work of the voters and so what did joe biden run on right since most women right since boy says why women why women hold two-thirds of the nation's student debt what did joe biden run on he ran on college loan debt forgiveness right so the vast majority of women voted for joe biden especially in minorities blacks and hispanics and over 50 percent of all white women of all white women voted for joe biden women make up a much larger demographic of the voting base because a lot of men don't vote this is by design to keep and to to continue the expansion of large government this is why this is it's all literally all by design why are more people single now than ever why are more single they're single mothers now more than ever it's because of the welfare expansion as the welfare continues to expand the percentage of single mothers will increase 58 percent of all millennial women are single mothers and all of them of course are going to vote for the continued expansion and extraction of wealth from one group which is predominantly men to them via welfare and go on to say here women hold most credit card women hold um, most credit card debt a national debt service from 2015 66 percent of women carry um credit card debt compared to only 33 percent of women and of course it says why 2018 why women notoriously have more credit card debt than men this is all by design credit card the, the system of debt and that's why they didn't want a lot of women a lot of women to be married and so that's why over the over the generations, decades that have gone by, they've pushed for the strong single woman narrative. It's because well, America is a consumer economy. And so you typically men don't need much. They don't consume much. But if you have women and children, the, the, the wants never go away. The never ending wants. You know, that's why they say women are a, 
a liability. Women and children are a liability to men because they always want something. And so the government understands this. The government understands how men and women work. And that's why you see this very strong push to keep men and women, keep men and women apart for this very purpose. So that the government can continue to expand, so that the government can continue to create debt. This is how fiat currency works. So when you look at the different demographics of how much do women earn average, the average and mean woman, the median for all women, 50, less than 51,000 annually. This is in 2022, according to statistics from 2022. When you look at income disparities, uh, when you look at the average income over the age, you can see the average person, the bottom 25% make 25, 20,000 with the 75 percentile make 52,000 or less. So a lot of these women that are, this is all before taxes. So a lot of these individuals that were like, I know my worth, we're strong and independent, I don't need a man. They typically, they typically don't, but most of them live impoverished. And in fact, when you look at the statistics for most jobs in government, they're primarily held by women, right? As you can see here, women are highly represented in government service jobs, standing at 58% and 56% of positions in the financially related fields. Well, we just showed two-thirds of women hold all the national debt in terms of student loan debt, and women typically are in more credit card debt than men. So why would you hold such a high percentage of them in the role of finance? It's because they're going to be financially irresponsible. And the government understands this. this is why the women this is why they push these women into these roles. It's because they know that they're going to be financially irresponsible and they're going to drive the country into more and more debt. And it's primarily held, all this debt is held by women. And they burden themselves down with all this debt, they pretend like they're living this fabulous lifestyle. And it's just not true. I mean, you can look at any of these statistics. I mean, the when I saw that statistic for millennial women, I was shocked. I was like, holy shit, 58% of all millennial women are single mothers? That's astounding. But that is the direction that the country is going to and it eventually it all goes away eventually all these women that are strong and independent and it's why you see the government moving in the direction that, it, that it's moving where it's more totalitarian more censorship more where the government is looking actively looking for ways to control people is because this eventually goes away it's not sustainable and the government knows that and so all this strong and independent nonsense is going to go away. And America is going to look a lot more like China. And that's just because eventually they're not able to sustain all of this deficit spending. But more importantly, it's primarily because they're going to have to clamp down on a lot of the welfare. When you look at the statistics for, uh, I think it was last year in 2020 or 2021, where was 63% of all people in the country pay no taxes. And that means that everything is welfare. When you look at how much the government spends, it's like 75, 80% of what the government spends is all on welfare. And it's not sustainable. And the government knows that. That's why when they saw the pandemic, they were like, this is a perfect opportunity to enact some form of, some form of much more restrictive control, right? They're going to keep it at homes. They're going to have all this nonsense about windmills and we're going to build EVs and we're going to tax, you know, you're not going to use oil. We're going to reduce our carbon footprint, all this nonsense. It's because they're trying to clamp down on the amount of spending and welfare that's going to take place because it's not sustainable. And that's why, I mean, shoot, there was just a recent article about where they're literally putting new fencing around the Federal Reserve. There's more soldiers around the around the White House. It's because they know what's coming. They're preparing for what's coming. And when the country starts to economically start to come down, people are thinking oh, the government is going to come out. They're going to give us steamy checks. They're going to come out with UBI or whatever. I really don't see that happening. When push comes to shove, they're going to do what they need to to keep themselves into a position of authority and to a position of power. The government is not acting in a way that when it all comes down, that they're going to just start showering people with stimmy checks. When the government and the economy starts to come down, they're going to come down hard on the people because the people are going to be like, give us more free shit. And the government is going to go tell you to eat a dick and they're going to come down really hard. It's going to be really 
shocking for a lot of people. This is this is basically the route that the government is moving. Now, if you live in a major city, like these people, these people live in Miami, the whole facade is going to disappear. It is what it is. It's just a route that America has chosen to go, and it's primarily the people's fault. It's primarily the fault of the people because the people continue to vote for more and more welfare, right? Education is a right. Healthcare is a right. Housing is a right. Well, if it's all a right, it's all supposed to be provided. Who the fuck is going to provide it? Who's going to pay for it? And this is the route that America is going. It's the route America has been going for decades, longer than I've been alive, more than likely longer than you've been alive. And we're all going to see it come to an end. A lot sooner than you think. A lot sooner than you think. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.